Welcome back to my series, Dance Moms Uncovered. Throughout the eight seasons and nine years since Dance Moms began, the cast have given and received many gifts. There are many instances where gifts were actually given by the producers, not to do something nice for the cast, but instead for the sake of good television. So there is more to the gift giving than the producers care to show. Feel free to share your thoughts on the following evidence. First, let's look at the snacks that the producers brought in. The cast of Dance Moms has been treated to a lot of food on the show, including ice cream, chocolate fondue, hot dogs, picnics, and many, many cakes. While the show often makes it look like Abby provided all of these treats, it is very likely that a lot of it is set up by production. There have been a lot of cakes on Dance Moms, many of which are sheet cakes that look eerily similar to one another. While nobody has explicitly stated that the cakes were staged for the show, cast members have posted images of cakes that the production crew has gotten for them, including Abby, Mia, Brooke and Kendall. A lot of these cakes are very similar to the cakes we see on the show, and many of them are around the same size. When Kathy from Candy Apples brought in a victory cake with Abby's face on it, a lot of people wondered what she would have done with the cake if she lost. According to Abby, the producers set her up to lose that week by forcing her to do a Spice Girls number, and they wouldn't let her find a replacement for Maddie, who was away that week. So chances are, production knew that Candy Apples was very likely to win and decided to order the cake. Secondly, Abby has revealed in an Abby Lee After Class episode that the producers set up the chocolate fountain in season six, episode 26. She also seems to suggest that they are responsible for other treats as well, when she questions why the kids should be loaded up with sugar at a competition. After the competition on Mother's Day, there was a big chocolate fondue set up. Why you give a bunch of kids candy and chocolate at a dance competition, I'll never know. But it's production, so nobody ever knows. In the description box of this clip on Lifetime's YouTube channel, they claimed that the fountain was a reward from Abby and the mumps. This means that other treats, such as ice cream, cakes, and picnics, were likely to be organized by the production crew. After all, Abby was pretty busy, and many of the treats that the girls got would suddenly appear in the dressing rooms while Abby and the mums were busy at awards. Lastly, Abby tweeted that she and Leslie both received snack boxes in the mail. She seems really suspicious about the whole thing, as though she believes that the producers want them both to gain weight and remain intimidating characters for the show. In isolation, there isn't much proof that this was their intention, except Abby revealed years later that the producers would constantly be bringing her fast food on set, even when she was trying to be healthier. She even implied they're partly to blame for keeping her fat. I tried to be vegan, let's say hashtag almost vegan, right. but even on the TV show, they would laugh in my face. They didn't care if I was trying to be vegan, hand me a hoagie sandwich like an Italian sub from somewhere and I'm like, what is this? Lunch meat, I can't eat this. Next, let's talk about Jill's gifts. It was established very early in season two that Jill was willing to buy whatever gifts it took to get Kendall ahead at the ALDC. From buying Abby jewelry, a bench and a massage to the $20 bribe she gave Kendall, she seemed like the ultimate manipulator. However, Jill has had the chance to defend herself on Twitter. She has reminded fans that there were two sides to every storyline on the show. She has also said that she was set up and encouraged to say things in these early episodes. When one Twitter user asked Jill why she was such a suck up, Jill explained that it was because the producers wanted her to be, because it makes her a compelling TV character. One scene of the show that caused a lot of controversy was when Jill paid for Abby and Gianna to get personal massages at the ALDC studio. However, the other mums on the team show up and find out about what Jill is doing, and a big fight begins. Well, isn't it funny how the mothers showed up randomly at nighttime without their kids? There was even a camera positioned outside the studio to film Kelly as she walked into the building. When this episode was aired, Jill strongly suggested on Twitter that the mums knew what was going on. And if you think about it, it makes sense. How could Jill sneak all this equipment into one of the studio rooms without anyone seeing it? Lastly, in season two, episode four, Jill tells Kendall that she will get $20 if she does well in her trio. While this seems like a bizarre idea, and frankly, a bad parenting tactic, 
Jill revealed that this wasn't what happened. Apparently there was a fudge shop at this competition, and the kids wanted to buy some fudge for Abby, but they didn't have time to buy any before they competed. So Jill set aside the $20 for them to motivate Kendall, and then they all bought fudge for Abby after the competition. 3. The Christmas Special Gifts The highlight of the Dance Moms Christmas Special in 2013 was when the girls and mums all received gifts from Abby. Well, something about the gifts in this special doesn't add up. How could Abby afford these gifts? Abby filed for bankruptcy in 2010 and owed $400,000 worth of debt. She has said herself that her contract only promises her $1,500 per episode. And then I ended up signing my life away. Four years with a four-year option for $1,500 an episode. So why would she spend a total of around $10,000, or 10 weeks of her pay, on gifts for this episode? My theory is that Abby advised Lifetime on what gifts the girls would like, but she didn't actually pay for them. I think this for several reasons. The Christmas special was filmed in the middle of the competition season in 2013, so Abby would have been way too busy leading up to this episode to buy all the gifts. Abby has mentioned that as a kid, she always wanted a puppy for Christmas, so she decided to get Mackenzie one. So Abby was clearly involved in the decision. However, I can't help but notice that Abby doesn't seem to know the specifics of what the girls got. You can see her checking out the gifts as she's revealing them to the girls, as if she didn't actually know exactly what was in each one. I also think perhaps the producers took the opportunity to further push their narrative that the Ziegler girls are the favorites by getting them the best gifts. When showing her appreciation for Nia's gift, Holly only tagged Lifetime, not Abby. And even Melissa didn't thank Abby for Malibu on Instagram. In 2014, the Zieglers even spoke about how Abby would spoil them by buying them clothes. However, they didn't even think to mention that Abby bought them those expensive gifts from the Christmas special. The presents she buys, she loves to buy she gifts. She spoils me. Every time I see her, she like buys me new clothes. Abby loves to buy for the girls. That's yeah. awesome. Actually, she bought dresses here, and I have them in my suitcase um, for all the girls. But <laughs> she bought a really pretty um, fur vest from Neiman Marcus for Jill for Christmas. Of course. Of course. Of course. That's about to say <laughs> it was beautiful. And then she bought a really beautiful shirt for Holly. Kelly stated on Twitter that her gift from Abby was supposed to be sent to her, but she never received it. This could possibly be because the holiday special was filmed the week before the infamous fight between her and Abby. So perhaps Lifetime held on to the gift because of the legal dramas that followed it. I've also scoured the Highland social media accounts, and there's no evidence that Brooke and Paige got their gifts either. Strangely, with the exception of Mackenzie and Nia, it's very unclear whether any of the other girls actually got to use their gifts. Speaking of these gifts, Chloe's gift card said $250 on it even though Abby said it was a lifetime gift certificate. So lifetime probably just referred to the production company. Evidence number four, bribery. While Jill may not have actually been the one behind all the bribing on Dance Moms, there was still bribery going on behind the scenes. Lifetime and Collins Avenue have bought gifts for both Abby and the cast to keep them willing to participate in the show. I've mentioned this before, that there was an incident where Abby told Nia that she didn't want any quote, little tooties on the show, meaning young African-American girls. To diffuse any uproar that this caused, the production company bought iPads for all the girls. This isn't the only time that gifts were showered upon the cast with an agenda though. The season eight cast received Amazon Fire TV 4K sticks. It seems like a bit of a weird present to buy Gen Z kids, who generally tend to prefer watching entertainment on mobile devices over using televisions until you realize that Lifetime has an app on Amazon Fire TV. So this post is pretty much a subtle ad that serves the purpose of selling Dance Moms fans, Amazon Fire and Lifetime subscriptions. Abby has also been given lavish gifts to keep her willing to participate on the show. She has received flowers and an expensive Chanel watch over the years, along with chocolate, champagne and flowers from the international a &E media company. The production company even gave her a car for her participation in season 8. Abby has even admitted herself that the production company would give her anything she wants to keep her around. I left a hundred times. They begged me to come back. So when they Cheryl They gave me the world. So when Cheryl Burke At Christmas time in 2019, 
Abby was given a Christmas package from Lifetime, including a Christmas tree, decorations, and a schedule of Lifetime Christmas movies, which she unboxed on her YouTube channel. Finally, let's look at the gifts from Rival Studios. I searched everywhere to find evidence that revealed where the gifts from Rival Studios came from, and honestly, I found nothing. From cakes to fruit baskets and other gifts from Rival Studios, nobody has spoken out about where they came from. I think that just watching these scenes reveals a lot about these gifts. When Abby first competes against MDP, she makes a snarky remark to them, asking to send a fruit basket. Erin Babs and the MDP mothers are sitting in the auditorium to watch the dancers, but then all of a sudden they happen to have gotten their hands on a fruit basket to give to Abby. I'd be willing to bet that the producers went out to go buy the basket, because nobody is that committed to making fun of a rival dance studio, especially Erin, who actually seems to be a pretty positive and successful person. When Studio 19 leaves gifts for Sarah, Abby immediately recognises what is going on, and tears up the card to try and stop the drama that she knows will inevitably ensue. If Studio 19 really broke into the ALDC dressing room to plant gifts, wouldn't it be filmed? It also makes no sense that Studio 19 would spend so much money buying gifts for Sarah, who they only taught for a single year. There have been things randomly appearing in the dressing rooms all the time for years, so I doubt that Studio 19 are the masterminds behind these gifts. While I'm all for the producers treating their cast to nice things, there were some instances where it was used to manufacture drama and manipulate them, which isn't what gift giving should be about. So what do you guys think? Do you think all these gifts were supposed to manufacture drama? Or do you think that sometimes the production crew was just being nice? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.